Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Song of Creation combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4 mana enchantment saying you may play an additional land on each of your turns and whenever you cast a spell draw 2 cards but at the beginning of your end step you have to discard your entire hand which is a pretty big drawback. I've tried Song of Creation in a bunch of different shells including Arclight Phoenix decks but overall I've liked the combination of Song of Creation with Adventures the most which of course makes a lot of sense. That way if you're empty handed and you top deck a land you can still play one of your adventure creatures out of exile and uh, keep the card draw flowing with Song of Creation. And then eventually I settled on including Song of Creation in this uh, Underworld Breach combo deck that we featured a couple of uh, weeks ago with the release of Theros. Since the deck kind of plays all these adventure creatures already, so Song of Creation is just a perfect fit in this deck. It essentially replaced Taimyo at 4 mana, which was another way of uh, enabling the self mill to fill the graveyard for Underworld Breach. But with the discard to hand size from Song of Creation on the end of turn, you kind of fill the graveyard anyway, so it still does a good job of filling the graveyard to enable your Underworld Breach escape. So then uh, the goal of the deck is to eventually win the game by playing a Thassa's Oracle with an almost empty library. Do have to be a little bit careful because of course a draw trigger from Song of Creation will happen before the Oracle enters the battlefield. So you do need to make sure you have a couple of cards left in your deck before you play the Oracle. Otherwise you might end up decking yourself before winning the game. So let's take a look at the entire deck list. At one mana we've got a nice cheap adventure creature with a Merfolk Secret Keeper. Can use Venture Deeper to put the top four cards of our library into our graveyard, which will also help fuel the graveyard for escape, which is very useful. And then for one mana we can play the Secret Keeper out of exile, which is a nice way of enabling the uh, Song of Creation if we're empty handed. Then of course we've got our two copies of Thassa's Oracle. We've got uh, one more copy than the original Underworld Breach build because we do want to ensure that we have access to Thassa's Oracle. If it's the bottom card of our library, then we're going to have a hard time winning the game. Then we've got our four copies of Underworld Breach. Don't really want to draw it early on in the game, but it is a nice card draw engine, especially if we don't have access to Song of Creation. It can help us win the game. And if we happen to put the two copies of Thassa's Oracle in our graveyard, then Underworld Breach can give us access to those Thassa's Oracles again to still win the game. Then we have our four copies of Growth Spiral. It's just a nice ramp card to get to more mana to help us play Song of Creation earlier. We've got the full playset of Lucky Clover, which is also where the name comes from, as a way to double up on our adventures. Great with the Secret Keeper, very good with our next card, the Brazen Borrower, which can Petty Theft to bounce an opposing non-land permanent, which is our main interaction in the deck, and yet another adventure creature we can play out of exile. And then of course Beanstalk Giant is very good too with the Lucky Clover, turn 2 Clover, turn 3 Beanstalk, get 2 lands untapped, another nice way of ramping, and we've got plenty of basic lands in the deck to search up. And another key adventure creature in the deck is the Rose Thorn Acolyte, which we can use the Seasonal Ritual for 1 mana to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. And of course with the Lucky Clover we get to generate even more mana than we spent on the Seasonal Ritual in the first place. And if we have one or more Song of Creations in play, we both start drawing cards and generating mana, which makes this a very powerful inclusion. And we can always just discard it if we can't make use of it right away and maybe later get it back with an Underworld Breach. We're happy to mill it with the Merfolk Secret Keeper as well to then later get it back with Escape. And another natural inclusion is Uro, which helps us ramp, gain some life. And we also don't mind discarding it to hand size or milling it with a Merfolk Secret Keeper as we can always escape it out of the graveyard. So another potential way of kickstarting our Song of Creation if we're empty handed. And then uh, finally our Beanstalk Giant which we've already covered. Definitely want to adventure this one first and every now and then it can also help us to uh, close out the game if we don't manage to combo off just as a big creature that can uh, attack and block. And then the mana base, plenty of basic lands to search up with our Beanstalk Giants and our Fable Passage. So we've got 5 islands, 2 mountains and 5 forests for breeding pools since the deck is base blue-green. And then also the addition of the new Triome which makes all 3 colors, so also makes it easier to include more basic lands in the deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, pretty solid hands. Turn to Clover. With Clover in play, Acolyte can also ramp if we just need one more mana. Facing a Giruda deck.
Jiruda milling me is also something we have to keep in mind. It's usually an advantage for us since we like filling the graveyard. So next turn we could see Jiruda. Fable Passage means I can go Song into Rose Thorn. And I guess I could play the Secret Keeper, I'll still have Acolyte and Uro that I can play if I'm empty-handed. Alright, another Acolyte is nice. More acolytes, more fun. 30 cards left. I don't think we're winning this turn, but we can set up nicely for the future. Spiral means can make green. And another clover is nice. Alright, so plenty of adventure creatures to kickstart Song of Creation, Uro to escape, and Double Clover means that if we ever find the Brazen Borrower, we're off to races, and we can set them back to the Stone Ages. They did hit double Spark Double, so three Gerudas. Alright, now they bricked. I have 10 cards remaining, so I will need to win the game quickly here. Let's do some quick inventory here. I have one Underworld Breach left, and one Thassa's Oracle, if I'm correct, which means we have two good hits in 10, but of course we do need to hit them before we reach the bottom of our library. So... Do I want to escape Uro or do I want to play Clover is a question. I think I'll start by playing Clover. Alright, there's a Breach, so that should do it. Brazen Borrow down to 6. Can bounce all their stuff. And we even drew the Oracle, so... Four cards left, play this, draw two. And Devotion is more than two, so... That does it. Sweet. I kind of lost track what turn that was, but it must have been around turn five, turn six. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Double Song in hand. It's also a little awkward since you'll only be able to really play one of them. But uh, yeah, it seems okay. We've got Brazen Borrower for interaction, Uro for a bit of ramp. Facing a Sprite Dragon. Let's 
science. Sure. Challenge. Probably still spiral. I could brazen borer, but we can do it next turn. Alright, and Acolyte's pretty nice too, as a first play we can make after we play Song. My plan is crystallizing. Discards Phoenix, so it's an Arclight Phoenix uh, deck. So they need two more spells to get back Phoenix. So if they go land into one mana spell, they could still do it. Is this a shock maybe? Yep. Alright, so Phoenix comes back. But it's only one copy, so it's still manageable. So we get to play Song. I do like Lucky Clover. Or I could Brazen Borrower, Bouncing, Science, which is maybe better. Think I'll play Clover. Next turn we should be able to escape Uro. And now we have Clover in play to power up our future plays. Typically want to play the cheaper spells first if possible, although with Uro I do want the life gain pretty badly and I might draw into like a Brazen Borrower, and if I spiral first I might not have the mana to do everything I want. So sure, let's escape. Keeping Brazen Borrower in the graveyard in case of a breach. So let's uh, Acolytes. Not our song. Yeah, I guess I'm in. So I can still play an extra land. I think I only have one extra land drop remaining and not two, otherwise I could breach into Brazen Borrower, which would be quite strong. Yeah, I should keep better track of how many land drops I have left. But I guess I can see here if I play my mountain if I have one left. Alright, I do. So I can breach into Brazen Borrower, so let's do that. Probably should have used the floating green mana instead of the blue.
should have another island left to fetch. Just want to double check. Yeah. All bound science. And probably Phoenix. And then I don't think I have anything else left to do for one mana. Just double checking. Alright. That was a pretty decent turn. Hopefully we're not dead, and then next turn we get to keep going with Double Song in play now. 20 cards remaining, so eventually need to find another Oracle or Breach. Yeah, if they can cast two more spells, we could definitely be dead. Uh oh. Yeah, if we see an opt, double Phoenix and double Sprites this game. Blitz will do it too. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the play. Don't love having a hand with two Underworld Breach in it. So this is probably a mulligan. Alright, this I can keep. It's not perfect, but at least we've got Uro into hopefully Song. Ideally, Song into Acolytes. Facing a Jeskai deck. So, probably a Winota deck is my guess. Yeah, if they have the namesake card, we're in trouble, unless we find the Brazen Borrower to delay it. Yep, Hanged Executioner to non-humans to set up Winota. And we don't have a Brazen Borrower at the ready. So, do I Spiral here? Do I go Rose Thorn into Song? And then at the very least I can play the Rose Thorn next turn. Playing Spiral seems a little bit weak, because even if I do hit a land, I'm not accomplishing all that much. If I just play Song and discard four cards, I'm still unable to escape Uro. So I think I'm just gonna do this. Luckily no turn for Winota. So for now we're safe. Alright, let's just play the Acolytes, see where we end up. Alright, Brazen Borber's good. Although, of course, I won't be able to hold it until they play Winota, because I'm going to have to discard it. But bouncing one of the non-humans is already decent. Probably bounce a token. Fetching with Fable Passage would put an extra card in Graveyard for Uro purposes. But sometimes we also want to leave Basics in the deck to uh, search up with the Beanstalk later. At 7 mana, of course, they could also hardcast Agent of Treachery. They might have kept mana up to use Executioner on Uro, but I don't care too much about Uro.
still have one Thassa Zirkle left in the deck. So don't mind exiling one of them. Although, of course, if it's the bottom two cards of my library, that could be an issue. Alright, so we're just making a lot of mana. Opponent gonna cycle the Triome. Works too. And a Racy Alarm end of turn. Alright, so if they do have Winota, they'll have three non-humans attacking, which could be bad. We'll just keep comboing as much as we can. Maybe find another Brazen Borrower, bounce some of those tokens. So I guess I can afford to mill myself a little bit. If I mill two Underworld Breaches and Oracle, then we're out of win conditions, so that's the scenario we want to avoid. Alright, so still have most of our win conditions in the deck. I guess I can still fetch with uh, Beanstalk. If I have a forest left to search up, that is. I don't. Ooh. Alright. Don't really want to mill myself more with the Secret Keeper, because that starts getting sketchy. So can mill my opponents just to have the Secret Keeper in exile so I can play it for one mana, seems fine. Milled an Agent, Winota, don't mind seeing that. And then I think I'll just pass and keep these uh, in exile for now. And the next turn I should be able to pretty much draw the rest of my deck, one way or another. Alright, so our opponent concedes, so... Yeah, the Winota deck, they do need to pretty aggressively mulligan to have Winota in their opening hand. If they don't, the deck can feel a little bit underpowered. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Decent hands. Fetch up a forest first. Not sure if I'm gonna spiral or clover onto, probably spiral. And then on turn three we can clover plus secret keeper. Could be maybe the hexproof enchantments deck. Which we could have a hard time uh, interacting with. I guess Brazen Borrower can bounce the enchantments themselves. Season of Growth. And another Paradise Root. Probably want to get a Mountain. Clover into Secret Keeper seems fine. Alternatively, I could Uro. But if I miss on land, it's pretty bad. Could have also kept up double blue so we could mill and then play Secret Keeper. But I think I want to just keep Secret Keeper in exile for after the Song of Creation in case we fizzle. So let's just pass. Really hoping for land next turn so we can play Song and then. Seasonal Ritual instead of the other way around. Did 
They don't have vigilance yet, but maybe that's coming. All that glitters. Yeah, that's gonna hit pretty hard. And do they have a sentinel's eyes as well? They don't, not are all that glitters. 13. All right, if I don't find a brazen borrower, soon we're in trouble. The uh, paradise root also tramples, so can't really uh, chump it with the secret keeper. I guess what I need to do is Acolyte, make two mana, then play Uro and hope to draw into the Brazen Borrower. Is that it? Can't really play Song of Creation. And if I Uro first, I'm gonna be maybe short on mana if I draw into the Brazen Borrower. GG's, we are in fact dead. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent hands. Could use a bit more mana, I suppose. Interesting decision whether or not I need to fetch Mountain here. Don't love fetching Mountain early, because it's a bit of a nombo with Uro, but I might need it for Song of Creation. And that way I can play the Lucky Clover before milling with the Secret Keeper. So now I don't get to play my Gross Spiral, not a reason to avoid fetching Mountain early. Stormfists. Luckily hit our lands. Yeah, let's start milling. That way we'll have the Secret Keeper in exile by the time we play Song. Could also decide to play Breach first, maybe get some of these Acolytes back. Double Crusader, we can bounce with the Brazen Borrower. I guess we'll do it now. And then ideally find a land so I can go Song into Rose Thornal next turn. Nightmare 4-5 with no drawback here with Menace. Beanstalk essentially costs me one mana to play. So it's not ideal, but I guess I'll still go for it. Alright, so next turn we should be able to have a pretty nice turn. Probably hold the Secret Keeper since it doesn't really do much. Dreadmalkin is a nice combo with the new 1 mana Act of Treason if you control a menace creature, so they're probably playing that as well. Alright, so if I go Song, I can still Rose Thorn into Breach, which seems good.
So this one I can still escape using the seasonal ritual. Next up, I guess we can Beanstalk. And then probably want to hit the reset button with a Brazen Borrower, bouncing some stuff. And that should conclude our turn. Probably could have sequenced our mana a little bit better with the fetching and the searching with the beanstalk to end up with more blue mana in the end to maybe still play a Thassa's Oracle. But I think we'll be okay. We're at 10. 20 cards remaining. A lot of lands in play now. Start by escaping Uro. And now with the breach it should be pretty much uh, locked up. Fourteen cards remaining. And we should be able to adventure some of these acolytes, which are essentially free as well. Twelve cards remaining. can also mill myself with the Secret Keeper if needed, but I don't think we'll have to. Gotta make sure we have at least uh, two cards left when we cast Oracle as well. Eight cards remaining. So we'll just play Clover, play Oracle, and that should do it. Sweet. All right, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.